Super Monoblock. So here we've got the Tascam Porta 5 Mini Studio. Bit of reference material, bit of reconnaissance for anyone who needs to open one of these up, get in, change the belts, maybe do some soldering, do some cleaning. This is the high speed model. To the point of view of deconstructing it, the only difference is this logo on the outside and there's a higher speed motor inside. Um, but for the purposes of taking it apart and everything, it's just the same unit. I'm assuming here that I'm not only changing the belts, but I'm going to be um, taking the mixer out of the upper part of the plastic case for cleaning, in which case that means I'm going to be removing these plastic caps for the various pan and take cue, etc, etc. So don't worry about this step if you're not going to be um, cleaning the mixer. Just before I do this little thing, uh, if you're in the same position as me, which I imagine most people watching this aren't, where you've got a disassembled Porta 5 and a disassembled Porta 7 in the same box, don't get mixed up into thinking that these two types of cap are the same, they're not. And you can see the Porta 7 ones are actually slightly smaller and um, relative to the pot shaft, the little indicator knob is on the opposite side so if I quickly take this off and put this one on and it fits but you see how the knobs are swinging underneath instead of around the top so there you go a little bit of trivia for the real nerd out there anyway you can see I've got this this is a tool for removing um, upholstery in a car it's just um, plastic so it doesn't scrape anything um, sometimes you can use corner of an old credit card or whatever but it will help you get in here and remove all of these and you can see that the colouring is actually um, coming through translucent plastic so there's no need to organise these knobs as you remove them. Most of these uh, knobs and sliders are fitted from the back uh, the exception is the power switch here so that needs to be removed first, or at least um, be careful not to lose it when you open the case up. To open the case, you're going to need to remove five screws. Um, I've actually only got one in here at the moment because I did, no, two, because I was in here before, but uh, the location of those screws is denoted by these five squares of white masking tape. Don't go looking for them on the, your machine, they're not there. I've just added them to make it easy for you to see. You're welcome. Another little bit of trivia, I started confusing myself because I was trying to put this size of screw back in. Um, this is from a um, Porter 1, these are the ones from the Porter 5, so they're very similar looking but um, it's a slightly shorter design for the Porter 5. But they're of this type, um, a raised area on the head, a long, I think that's called a shank, and a wide ferrule because we're going into plastic mounting posts. Okay, that's the screws removed, so as you open this, you probably hear a clicking sound as uh, this catches on these buttons, you move it very forward very slightly. You can open that from the front and back like that and you can see that there are three cables connecting the two halves. Uh, this long one goes across the way to four pin header over here and then these two are easy to tell which is which because black plug going into black header white plug going into white header and that's got six pins and that one's only got four so no confusion there we'll come back to the mixer probably the most obvious or frequent thing that's going to be wrong with this is that the there will be problems with the transport if you've seen my videos before about the GEC transport you can see that this is one such so I've done a whole range of videos about the different belt sizes um, how to lubricate it problems with playback all sorts of stuff. Um, so this will just be quite a cursory video about just removing it from the chassis, the particulars of that, because the um, cables coming out from the magnetic heads plugs are slightly different shape. So some of these cables are very fragile, so I would tend to grab the sides of the plug with a pliers or similar leads are leading to your record and playback head here so that's tracks one tracks two it's all labeled on the pcb and there's a little cable tie here it's uh, screwed into the pcb below and then the um, black cables there's just a single socket for the raise head this one's reluctant 
a little bit more when I go. It comes out. Only other cables connecting are double wire one up here in the top right corner of this uh, record playback PCB. And then there's a um, the cable that's going to the motor and everything is underneath this zero return switch. So if you lift that cap off and keep it to one side safely, um, then you should be able to get this cable out. So there's one, two, three, four screws. Two in between the buttons, one in that corner, one in that top right corner. And lift that out, you can see that in addition to those four posts, there's two plastic pins, one here, and uh, one that's just under there, that are fitting through corresponding slots on the metal chassis of this transport. Refer to my videos that I've already made and already up on my channel about the GEC transport in terms of how you would uh, change any of the rubber parts or minor engineering issues you're having with that. So if you're having any kind of intermittent problems, low signal and so on, I would uh, tend to clean the mixer before going into calibration or signal tracing or recapping or any of these more complex and time intensive processes. There's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six screws. I've got Sharpie pen arrows pointing at it. Um, to save myself time, there's only two of them in at the moment. I'm wondering why I haven't put um, arrows at these two. Well, I think they, they would have screws in them as well. Um, I'm not quite sure why I haven't put an arrow in them. I'm just checking this other half to make sure. Sometimes you need to mark up these boards so that you can distinguish between holes where you're putting the screw directly into the back of the PCB and holes which are going to be sandwiched between two plastic layers. I don't think those are such holes, so you would expect to see an additional two screws in there as well. So yeah, that's going to come out now. You could furthermore take off these two little caps that go on these gain controls. This has already been cleaned. Um, there's caps here on these switches. These two are the same. Is that the same design? Yeah, it is. If you're not familiar with how to clean one of these, um, check my cleaning playlist on my channel. Very briefly, you would use contact cleaner, compressed air, go through that cycle a few times and then either apply a contact cleaner and a final pass that has a lubricant built into it. So Kig Deoxit, for instance, makes several contact cleaners that have lubricant built in or you can use a separate lubricant. So in my region, it's much cheaper to buy Servisol 10 and to buy Kig Deoxit lubricant separately and only use that in a final pass. If you don't use a lubricant afterwards, some of these can dry out. Some contact cleaners, um, Surface Hole 10 is an example of one, will actually strip any internal lubricant off the shaft of pots and so on, so be careful of that. Only other thing to remark on here is uh, that this bit of shielding is actually soldered in, so if you needed to get any of the solder contacts under here, then you would have to desolder that first. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why you would need to remove this, but I will do it for the sake of being complete. So you can see this is the um, record arm. And uh, be careful of this when you reassemble it. You need to line up the holes at the base of these plastic switches. There's nothing um, electrical in here, it's just a mechanical thing. Um, so it means for switches on the upper surface to reach um, electrical switches that are mounted to the lower printed circuit board. Um, but the way I've done it is to place both of those switches in the lowest position. Then when you put this down, then you make sure that these two buttons are also in the lowest position, you know, with the green showing. And you just slot it in to make sure that these plastic parts are going over the top of these switches. Um, that along with making sure that this little LED isn't bent and making sure that there's no stray wires or anything obscuring any of the plastic posts that are keeping the two parts of the case sandwiched together. Those are the only issues really to be aware of when you're reconstructing this. There's two screws there, comes off on the plate, it's little mounting pins that go through these holes here. Yeah, you can see that if you wanted to get in there and clean then these will come out like that and get any dust off and then so it's almost like a sort of zigzag motion to get them in and out. Do that a few
few more times, so it's difficult to describe it properly bit as well, just demonstrating it a couple of times. There, push that back there like that, with these pins and those holes. Uh, the door hinges, just little leaf springs on either side. And so you remount those um, so that the angled part is pointing downwards. So you put it on like that. I think this will still work with one end, but it's just what keeps it from shutting when it's open. And with the hinges removed, then you should just be able to... Maybe I need to look at it from this side. Yeah. And door will just come out like that. Um, same door as in the Porter 1, I think. Moving on to the deconstruction of the lower part of this Porter 05. I've got pinch control up here. Um, there's your return switch and their power switch, so those all, could all be cleaned. This daughter board is attached by two screws here. White ferrule screws for plastic mounting posts. And you can see beneath that we have a transistor, possibly a voltage regulator. I haven't looked up the serial number, but uh, there's a transistor there and a heatsink for the transistor. And uh, this will be your main reservoir. Filter capacitor for the um, DC input. This uh, is glue. It's not leaking fluid. Um, that's just to stop this rattling about too much. Should you need to calibrate the record and playback amplifiers, these little uh, yellow trim pots are what you need. Record and playback, those are adjustments I would make before refurbishing and selling one of these. The record amplifier gain, uh, these four for tracks one, two, three, four respectively. Uh, the playback amplifier gain is one, two, three, four respectively. Let's say we do need to place some components in this. Then we need to get this board separate from the case below it. There's one screw here with a cable tie. So it's a little bit faded, but you can see that I've been in here before and written with Sharpie C slash T there. To remind myself that the cable tie goes back there. Let's go around the edge again. One here. One there, which I've already removed. One in the center here, which I've already removed. And one in this corner. I think that's... Yeah, that's all of it. That would give you access to all this. Now, interesting thing about the shielding here is that uh, there's conductive tape here flat to the surface and it's making contact with this board uh, via spring. So the spring touches this surface and it touches these areas here. So if you're removing that, don't lose that spring and that's what it's for. Okay, so I will go away, calibrate this, try and do some recording with it. If any electrical issues come up, then um, I'll make a follow-up video going over what I did to fix that. Thanks for watching.